Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So we're, tonight we're going to explore uh, some another gin, and this one will be Pong Gin, which is a uh, uh, corresponds to the Wardoff posture in, in a Tai Chi form. But before that, um, someone had a question about feeling and go a little bit deeper into what that means and why that's important because it's uh, in the uh, in the Taiji classics, particularly in the young family secret transmissions or the 40 chapters as they call them, you know, there is, it's very explicit there that it is through conscious feeling and conscious movement that one develops the ability to, to move in a uh, highly uh, effective way and to develop Jin to be able to develop that internal power. And it, it is through the feeling, through that developing that conscious feeling that they say that you open to the uh, spiritual awakening. So let's just take a look at what that, what that means. And um, the the idea that, that I'm working off of is that for the most part, we are in a state where the, the default mode network of the brain is rattling along 24 seven, unless you are actively engaged in something else. So even while you're asleep, it is chewing away. And this is something that has uh, been indicated by the fact that your brain is using pretty much the same amount of energy and resources, no matter what you're doing, even while you're, in, uh, while you're asleep. So this default mode network is creating these, these, these thought patterns. And uh, when we're not actively engaging it, that's when we get the chatter. That's when the monkey mind appears and it chatters away. And if we want to experience a moment of where that is not present, where we go to the gap between thoughts, we need to be able to shift out of that default mode network. And the easiest way that I have found is, um, is through the sense of, of touch or the sense of feeling. And the, um, it works with any of any of the senses, but it it's easiest to grasp if you go through the sense of touch because it's the one thing that is non-local. It's the one sense. So you see with your eyes, you taste with your tongue, you smell with your nose. So that those are all very localized, whereas you feel all over. And to the extent that you can be aware of those tactile sensations you and bring your awareness to it then you shift into a different part of the brain you activate a different part of the brain and that pulls you out of that default mode network for the moment and through practice you can get there quicker i don't think you you ever get there where you're completely it's completely absent the, because that's, I think it serves a purpose. The default mode network serves a purpose. It keeps us alive by warning us of bad stuff that might be happening. So they, but if you are really engaged with life, then you're finding more and more of your, your attention and awareness is in this awakened state where you're not locked into this think, thinking mode. Because anytime you're in representational thought, anytime you're thinking, you are of necessity not in present time. You're in your thoughts. Anytime you're thinking about stuff, you think you are representing what's going on rather than resonating with it. And when that happens, you are uh, you you shift out of present time. Your your thoughts go into what do these words mean? And whenever we can move away from the naming and into that 
gap between, then we actually are in the present moment. And if we can learn to function in that, then we are able to, to know without thinking. We're able to move into a superconscious state. So it is through that feeling that, we, that we're doing. It's something we've been playing with for a number of months now. But just to quickly just get, you, get the idea, just if you, if you grab your wrist with, with your hand, and you feel your wrist with your hand. And the key here is to get out of the story. So that is, I'm, when, I'm, when I do that, I'm not thinking like, oh, I'm grabbing my wrist with my hand. And oh, my fingers go, don't go all the way around my wrist and blah, blah, blah. And if I start telling myself a story, I'm back in that, that thinking loop. But if I just feel, I'm using a different part of my brain. I'm moving out of that thinking part. Now, if I then feel my hand with my wrist, so I use my wrist and I, I can even move my wrist around a little bit or move my hand around a little bit so I can create a, a distinction between the two because the brain will tend to just summarize the event into one thing, but we wanna split them. And when we do that, if I'm using my right hand to hold my wrist and I'm feeling with my right hand, I'm using the left side of my brain, the left hemisphere. If I'm using my wrist to feel my right hand, my left wrist, I'm using the right hemisphere of my brain. And by shifting, consciously shifting back and forth, I create a, a heightened state of coherence in my brain, my mental state. So my mind goes into a different state, goes into a different state of awareness. It's one where there's a, there's a clarity that is beyond thought, beyond thinking. And thinking, I'm using a really very narrow definition here, you know, of thinking where it's actually using representational uh, symbolic computation where you're something means something else. So a word like if I say hand, you know, the word hand represents this. But if I actually feel the hand prior to thinking about it, it's not a hand, it's just now. And so this is a way to feeling we move into the present moment, predictably, effectively, and uh, easily accessible. So, and what happens whenever you do that on a regular basis is you start to rewire. You start to rewire your nervous system. You're able to then control your thoughts, control your brain, control your, your ability to direct your attention and then becomes much easier to perform um, anything actually. So this, when we do that, we move into that state. This is what it's referred to in the classics as E or YI. It's um, the E is that state of mind that is, that it transcends the, the heart mind, the shin, and it is, it's there. It's a, a there's a clarity there that allows you to direct your attention and also direct intention. And this is really uh, important for the the topic I want to talk about next, which is talking about different kinds of jin. And just to clarify what what we mean by jin. And this is easily uh, accessible through that feeling state. So I think they're really tied together. But whenever, you know, the, the, the distinction that's made, and first a disclaimer that I do not speak or read Chinese. And so uh, something should be obvious by now, but there's certain words that are used in the Taiji vocabulary that they just don't have an English equivalent. 
And rather than making up a word that that there's a perfectly good Chinese term, we use the Chinese term, even if I don't understand the full breadth of those, those terms. And something like Jin has a lot of different interpretations. And if you just go online, you know, just punch in J-I-N and, and probably need to qualify it as Taiji Chuan. And, uh, and you'll find a whole lot of different opinions on it. And I've heard, you know, many, many, many of them over the years, dozens of different opinions about what it actually means. In the general sense, it means internal power, but that's pretty fuzzy. Um, the best definition I've heard so far is it's, it's um, Li or crude muscular force, which is directed by the E or the super consciousness. It's like smart Li, smart muscle. So, um, you know, a lot of times people say don't use muscle, but it's actually, it's part of Jin is you're, you're using it. It's just that it's not the primary thing you're, you're directing. It's sort of along for, it's in a support function in the action. So like if I extend my hand with Jin, there's still muscle involved with that. It's just, it's not tensed. It is being directed by my intention to reach and open up. And when that happens, it's a different than if I push my hand forward using muscular force or lead. So we make that, that distinction there. And this is something we use it because it's useful to think about these in using those terms. Um, and I'm sure we can go a lot deeper into the, you know, the roots of these and, and the implications because it's, these are terms that have been around a long time. But it's useful to have the, use those terms rather than try to make up a new one. But to understand it, using well, my understanding of it is that we have chi, which is what we call energy or the relationship of stuff with other stuff is the energy that connects them. And the then we have the stuff and that the form or the structure that's filled. So Jin has both qualities of energy and structure. And it's directed by this, this very present mind, the E. So when we talk about Jin, we want to, we start with a state of whole body, energetic connection and also tensegrity that is your 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 feeling into the connective tissue of the body and that allows the energy to move very uh, very freely through through the through the system so if we think about um, uh, chin as a, like say a balloon the energy would be the breath that that fills up the balloon and the, the structure would be the balloon, the, the latex or whatever that's, that's being blown up. And so as it expands, then the, we have this expanding energy, which is what uh, that expanding energy is what is, gen, is, my understanding is what is referred to as Pong Jin, that sense of expansion, but it's not just a generalized expansion, it's, it's a directed expansion. And there's some people say, no, no, it's expanding in all directions. And my, from what I've spoken to, to with, with various teachers, it's no, no, it's, it's a very directed kind of thing. So that's why we have a, um, you know, it, it's called ward off energy. And that, that means it's, it's doing something. It's, 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 it's got a direction, it's got a focus. And all Jin has a direction, it has a focus, it's, it's, it's doing work and it has power, it's internal power because power is the ability to do something, the ability to perform a function. So we have this internal power means that it's, we have 
a just like the 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 balloon the the power in the balloon is not from the latex it's from the the interaction of that emptiness that breath with the substance of the of, of the of the latex so it's like the two together create this internal power whereas one or the other by themselves don't don't make that happen so when we get to pungjin it's this expanding energy and um so but at the core of it is something called uh Zheng Tijin, Z H E N G dash T I Jin. So and it, and basically, it's it's uh, a Chinese way of expressing what I what I've been talking about there. That is sense of whole body energetic connection, highly coherent energetic connection, and tensegrity. So, in the balloon, we see the tensegrity in the in the expanding latex, and so the energetic the connection that fills it up is is the um, is the driving force in that the insubstantiality that drives the substantiality so we get to that junk tijin by our three pillars that is energetic coherence central equilibrium and unkink the hose we get rid of the we fill up the system, we make it really coherent, and then we get rid of the, the, the barriers, the, uh, the impediments to the, the flow of the energy. When we do that, then the energy seems to do something on its own. It's, it's like the effect of, say, setting up a dam and, and directing the water in a certain way. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, the water is doing it. Well, actually, the dam did it too. You it created a structure that allowed the energy to move in a certain direction. So what we're doing with all this stuff is creating structures that allow the energy to go where we want it to go. And so there is a uh, active and passive role that we play in each of these things. We set up the conditions and then cool stuff happens. We don't set up the conditions, cool stuff doesn't happen. It just, you know, so there is this is a, a partnership that that goes in there between the active and the passive. So we want to uh, let's, uh, let's do something first, we want to play around with expanding energy and expanding energy in, uh, in the classical sense is wood energy, it goes from yin to yang. So We'll uh, play with uh, with a, a simple qigong exercise to do that. Well, first we'll establish our our three pillars. Then we'll do we'll do a uh, a wood exercise, and then I want to go to how to fit that expanding energy into a ward off posture so that the structure allows the energy to go where you want it to go. So let's. Uh, uh, before we do that, just any questions or thoughts for uh, before we uh, we shift. Just uh, want to make sure everybody's on board with this. All cool. Good, 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 good. Okay, let's do it. So first we'll get our three pillars. So let's step out. And feel the balls of both feet. Knees are unlocked. Feel the weight spread throughout the foot, but primarily focus in the balls. Reach with the crown of the head. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. And just notice that we're creating 
tensegrity just by holding these poles in opposition. The feet are reaching down through the floor. The crown of the head is reaching up to touch the ceiling. Lengthening the spine, opening the space between the vertebrae. Relax your lower back and allow your coccyx to drop, flattening out your lower back a bit, allowing your pelvic bowl to level out. So you're feeling the tensegrity between your Wei Lu at the, at the coccyx and the knee one at the crown of the head. Reach with the clavicular notch right here. Feel that lifting up and opening your shoulders, opening your chest. Feel the expansion that just comes with that. Reach with your elbows. Arms are slightly rounded. Opening the shoulders. Feel the energy flow in your arms, in your hands, as the shoulders unkink. Point your index fingers, feel them. Feel the energetic coherence throughout the whole system. And everything comes online. Your connective tissue system is activated. You can feel the tensegrity of the whole system. Release the quad, spiral down and turn. Just get that hip joint opened, sung, so you're sinking even more even as you're reaching up even more. Place the tip of your tongue on the roof of your mouth, behind your teeth. Breathe through your nose. Breathe deeply into the into the dantian, your lower abdomen. Uh, we're going to be doing it on both sides, so you can either mirror image with me if that's better for you, or you can can just use, translate it and use whatever arm you like. But I'm gonna use my right hand and begin, reach with my right wrist. And then reach with my fingers, open the shoulder joint. Feel my arm extending outward. Reach with my elbow, my wrist. And comes down. Set my elbow, reach with my wrist. Reach with the fingers and open, reaching out, feeling my arm lengthening, opening the joints. The elbow comes down, wrist follows. This time crosses my body over to the other side. Reaching with the wrist, the fingers and reach and open.
reach down with the elbow, the wrist, palm up. Reach for the wrist, the fingers, and open. Elbow, wrist. We're working on wood energy now. We're expanding up and out. Reach. Reach for the fingers, open. Feel that all the way down to your feet. Feel that reach. And then turn, reach with your elbow. Turn your body, reach with your wrist. Reach out, open. Elbow comes down, wrist follows. Jump, extend, open, and elbow comes down. Turn, reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers, and open. Elbow comes down. through the elbow, wrist. Elbow, wrist. And relax. Just notice your hands. Notice how your one arm is much longer than the other. As we extend, expand. Feel the chi, the flow in your arm. Feel the sung as you relax into your connective tissue system, letting go of muscular tension. And go to the other side, elbow, wrist, Reach, open, elbow down, wrist follows, fingers, elbow, wrist, fingers, reach, elbow. Wrist, cross, wrist, and fingers, reach, elbow, wrist. Feel as you do this. You want to feel the motion without telling yourself a story about it. Reach down with the elbow, the wrist, feel that. Feel your feet, your legs, your back. Turn, elbow, wrist, fingers. Reach. Open and elbow, wrist, fingers, elbow, wrist, fingers, reach. Elbow, wrist, fingers. Elbow, wrist, fingers, elbow, wrist, 
fingers, reach, elbow, wrist, fingers. Notice that your arms are a matching set now. And both arms are very sewn. Shoulders are sewn. Feel the chi in both hands. So we're noticing the substantial and the insubstantial. There's definitely physical sensations, the sense of blood flowing through the veins, through the arteries, capillaries, the effect that that's having on the surrounding tissue. Because it's also a sense of something even more insubstantial than that. We tune into that. We're just getting a sense of the structure as well as that which animates the structure, tuning into that. So in practicing our jin, we have an awareness of both the structure and the energy of the chi. Step in, the deep breath. Disappear the chi. And when I say it, disappear the chi, dissolve into the emptiness, that just gets rid of the substantiality of that. It still exists as a recreatable potential. We can summon that chi anytime we want. We just don't have to carry it around with us. We don't store it. So now we're going to play a little bit with uh, Pong Jin in a ward off posture. We'll keep it real simple for the, um, that we're gonna do with the, with the left arm first. I'll do it facing you. So take a, uh, you know, about a hip width stance so that, and, not too big. We want to just keep this fairly contained. We're not going to do a whole thing. What I'm going to do is begin in my rear leg. And then, so I'm, I'm loading up about 70% of my rear leg. So I feel the ball of my, my front foot. In this case, it's my left foot. I'm going to use that. My left foot, I push my left knee forward so that I can feel the floor through my foot. I can feel the connection from the floor through my knee of my body. I feel that support there. And then I spiral down to the right without moving the knee. So the knee stays set. I spiral down to the right. So I'm loading up my left claw. So really sinking down into that. So notice I'm about 70% in my left leg now. And I'm going to turn like this and reach out. So the arm position ends up like this, with the hand over the center of my chest. Notice that my elbow is lower than my shoulder. My wrist is lower than my elbow. Okay. And so my right hand comes down and reaches down. 
And there are a lot of ways of doing a, a ward off posture. So this is just one of them. But so what's going to happen here is I'm going to bring the arm out like this. So if I'm using muscle in this, in this situation, if I'm using Li, then as we've demonstrated many times, this is a, a very weak connection. So if someone pushes on that, it's, it's pretty easy to collapse if I tense up through my shoulder. So this is a, an example where the only way you can actually get this thing to work is through Jin. And specifically, this expanding up and out energy, Peng Jin. But there's a dance that goes on here between the energy and the structure that enables the energy to go where we want it to go. So in this case, if I'm going from my, from my back leg, in this case, my right leg, feel the ball of my left, set my left knee and spiral down to the right. So I'm loading up that left claw. And as I do that, I reach with my elbows. Just feel that. And do that again. So you're, you're feeling the ball, set the knee, spiral down. And as you set, as you spiral down to the right, you feel your elbows. You reach out with them, opening the shoulder joints. There's an immediate energetic connection, a whole body energetic connection that occurs here, but it also creates that tensegrity we're talking about there, the, the capacity to the whole connective tissue system to, to get that whippy tensile strength. So this just sets us, this just begins the conversation. I'm spiraled down to the right. I'm loading up that left claw. And as I turn, I'm going to now reach with my wrist. So there's a rotation that occurs. So from here like this, I set my elbows like this. I'm going to now rotate the forearm as I turn my body. So I'm going like this and my hand goes from, from down and facing out to rotating and facing in. What happens is that you're connecting up with the elbow gin and this creates a whole different um, rotational uh, spiraling kind of energy that comes up that if I just bring my hand up like this flat, it's, it's gonna be still a fairly weak connection. Even if I'm using my E to do it, it's, you know, it's still a weak connection because the structure is not supporting the chi. But if I want, I'm here like this and I oh, set my elbow and I rotate that, I'm reaching with my wrist as I do that, with my left wrist here. And at the same time, I'm pulling down with my right hand. So this is where you get the, the grasping the sparrow's tail idea. So this, notice my fingers are relaxing and I'm reaching with the wrist. And as I do that, we get the last thing to come online there are, oh, the fingers. You're expressing the whole system there. And your, your body lines up. So you're, you're spiraling down to the right. You set both elbows as you release the quad. And then as you turn, you're rotating that left forearm, reaching with the wrist reaching with the fingers. Yeah, so let's just do that a few times. So in your, so 
The left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Sinking into that left claw, spiraling down to the right, reaching with the elbows. Feel, feel the whole system. Feel the tensile strength in the whole body. And then turn, as you're turning the waist, you're pivoting on the right heel, you're closing that down and you're reaching with the left wrist rotating the forearm till you're squared up. Do that again. So after you start like this, reach with your elbows, spiral down to the right, reach with your elbows and turn, reach with the left elbow. At the same time, reaching down and out with the right elbow. Reach with both wrists, rotate the left forearm as you do that. Reach with the fingers. Again, left ball, set the left knee, spiral right. Reach with the elbows. Turn, reach with the left wrist, rotate, reach with the right wrist as you're coming down. So, uh, you wanna give me a hand with this? Oops. Cool, so uh, I just stand there. So if if I'm here like, like this and you, you wanna, you're pushing in. If I do not set my elbows and I try to turn, I'm, I'm lost. But if, if I just set my elbows, then immediately there's a, an uprooting quality that comes through the, uh, through that. But then I'm going to, I'm going to turn. So here again, I set that elbow. And if I just try to push my way out with my forearm, nothing's happening. But if I set the elbow and reach with the wrist, as soon as I reach with the wrist, it doesn't require a lot of effort. Push and it doesn't require a lot of effort to generate the pong chin. So then I'm here like this, I'm, oh, I reach with that, rotate the forearm and <laughs> there is a it's, it creates this, this beautiful, strong, coherent unit that enables that to work. Go try. <laughs> so, so put your left foot forward. Okay. And so we're, so actually bring you over this way. Here we go. Good. All right. So you're bringing the left foot forward and <laughs> Ball, knee, spiral down and set the elbows, right? So if you're if you're reaching out to, if she's setting the elbows, I can't do anything. She doesn't set the elbows, it's, it's easy. She sets the elbows, boom, and I'm already gone. But wait, there's more. So <laughs> the wrist, the key that the keep, the, the big mistake a lot of people do is they keep that arm straight but if you bend the wrist, release that, relax that, and reach with the wrist and reach with that as she's turning, it creates this very powerful gin. If she just tries to push me away without that, nothing happening. But sets the elbow, reaches with the wrist, and I'm gone. So this is how we generate Hong Jin. So boom, and then, so you can, even if you don't do, you know, even if this is not representative of how your form does a, uh, does a ward off posture, it's still the same thing. So that we get, as soon as you get that quality of energy there and you, you mastered that quality of energy, that particular gin, then you can use it in very 
very simple kind of kind of situations here. Like if Maria grabs my my hand like this, and I set my elbow and I go like that. It, it I'm using the same idea here, the Pong Jin, but it doesn't require the whole the whole build up to make that happen. It's a you know it's boom. You can do it with a very light touch and make that happen. Thank you. So <laughs> okay, so. Um, I don't know if we probably should have uh, uh, a little time here for a talk rather than going to the other side. So uh, let's uh, let's see if there's any questions on this. So rather than going to uh, anything new, so why don't you grab a seat and uh, let me know if you uh, how that how that went. Is that clear? Good, 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 good. All good. Hi, Lynn. Hey there. You'll be happy to know that I am hot tonight. <laughs> Excellent. I was so worried. Gorgeous. <laughs> well, you know, but when we, when we first started and I stood up and we did the first bit, I could I felt the energy moving coldly. I'm like, ah, oh, cold again. Interesting. And then I just heated up. Nice. <laughs> the report. That's the report. Wow, wow. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> the weather report. <laughs> There's a heat wave coming through. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, anybody else? Uh, yes, Valerie. Um, it's kind of strange in that that um, sense of fullness can I don't want to say it can be confused with, you know, the muscle tension because it's it's definitely not muscle tension, but I don't know how to describe it other than it's just the fullness. But I have to keep I keep checking to make sure because everything feels so solid and so big. I have to keep checking, okay, am I reaching with my elbows, you know, rather than reaching with the muscles or, you know, my shoulders. Uh it's just kind of it, it. I can see how it can be easy to be confused. Good you know, to people who aren't practicing it, you know, that that yeah. aren't feeling that aren't feeling it. Right. Right. And that's true. Uh, you know, one way of checking it is just to have a buddy, you know, grab your wrist and and see what happens whenever whenever you do that. And if you are using muscular force to do it, you're probably not going to get very far. So um, if uh, uh, and if you try, kids try it at home. And uh, if you run into any uh, questions or difficulties, let me know because I, you know, I would like to we can clear it up next week and uh, and go over. You know, try to make it you know real a real simple kind of kind of thing. Because once you get the simplicity of this, then you'll find it in all kinds of movements. And, and it's a, uh, you know, it's sometimes said that this is the fundamental uh, jin, that if you can't do pong jin, you can't do any of the others. So you get, you know, you, if you, so we're starting from zero and then we go into expansion because if you're starting from zero, there's no contraction, you can't go yin from there, you're already at the bottom. So now you're, you're expanding outward, so you want to. You are. Uh, uh, so this is our. This starts the conversation. So a lot of the other gins are just variations on pong, pong in different shapes and, and forms. Well, I find it very interesting that you started this whole thing with a question, um, you know, brought up by Stan, or you know, wanting you to uh, expound more on feeling because for me say there isn't anybody else around to push on me you have to feel that difference you have to feel that i'm not expanding out with my muscles i'm expanding out with the gym you know with yeah. the, the energy so right. um i it's it it's just kind of nice that one fed into the other nice good yeah it's like blowing up a balloon it's like whoa you know you <laughs> you you feel that you know you feel that that sense of fullness and and that's that's the the pong 
Keith, you had something? Well, you know, I'm, I'm listening to all this, this teacher talk back and forth, and you guys are like way deep. All I can say is that was a really good session, made me feel good, uh, gave me a lot of vitality just from that, Excellent. you know? Hey, shit, less than three weeks, baby, I'm getting this mother off, and then we go full bore. All right. uh, and and you, Ooh. Mr. Barrett, not not to like blow your socks off or anything. I want to tell you, you do a really good job of uh, vocally visualizing what you want the folks to do on your call. So with that, I'll cut out. And thank uh, you, Keith. <laughs> You'll get a package at the end of the week, my friend. <laughs> Great. Uh, cool. Cool. Anybody else? Cool. So anyway, you can play with it. Oh, Scott, you have something? Uh, just real quick that, you know, when you had us, after we did the first side, before we did the second side, standing there feeling the difference, it was really, really weird and <laughs> not so pleasant, but really, really weird because it was... Like not, you know, it was like half of one side and half, half of the other was full and the other half and the other side and went, because of the brain and the arms, I guess, or whatever. It was very bizarre. Did you, like, did you notice if your arms were actually longer? They definitely, long? felt, they definitely felt longer. I didn't actually, I didn't actually put them together. I should have. I didn't think of that actually when you said that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they probably were. Take, take a look at my arms in, in, in the video. It said, uh, it, <laughs> There's definitely a difference there. There's, there's definitely a, a, at least an inch difference there between the two. Mm. So it's uh, Scott, uh, uh, Jonathan. Would you think the arms would stay that uh, unparalleled if you really included the other arm in it? It's like, because when you did that exercise, it was this, we were doing the left and we weren't thinking that much about the right, more when we were doing the, the actual ward off. But I'm just wondering, because I, I did, my arm was definitely much longer. I mean, I could see it and, and feel it. But then again, I had really neglected to keep both hands in play because we were really focusing on the one arm so much. I'm just curious if, I mean, I guess I could just do it, but I mean, have you tried that? I mean, if you really keep the other arm in play as you're doing that exercise. Uh, I, I, I like to I like to make a difference there. I like them to do them to be different. No, so no, it's cool. It, it's definitely it, cool. It, it, it's it's cool to to do that just to be able to notice that. Oh yeah, there's, there's it, you can feel the difference, and I think it's I think it's uh, important to do it that way just so you can feel that. But uh, I, I see what you're saying. If you if you were to to engage both arms while you're doing it. Uh, would it change the experience? I think most definitely. Right. It would most, yeah, most definitely. I, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt that it would change the experience. Um, whether or not the arms would be physically longer or not, you know, we would, yeah. Uh, I think that there probably still be some difference there, but there would be a, you wouldn't, the energy differential wouldn't be as strong. Right. So I right. think uh, that's a good observation. Cool. Stan. <laughs> okay, now to get, okay, there I mean. Uh, the only thing I say is, wow, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Good. Nick. Yeah, I'm mute, Nick. There you go. Um, yeah, no, I just think actually I, I enjoyed the point of you get to feel that moment as the system comes back into balance when you do that with completely neglecting the opposite side at first because you get that that weird feeling that scott was talking about is like it's the system it's out of balance you feel out of balance you feel weird yeah right yeah. and so then it's like a big ah as it all comes back together <laughs> That feels really good. I like that. Thanks. Yeah, good. If if you ever have a, a doubt about <clears throat> whether or not your E 
you know, your mind is creating an effect in your body, you know, it, uh, that really brings it home. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, we're, we, <laughs> we're not in Kansas anymore. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, oh my goodness, it, it's, it, it's, it's a weird feeling. And I think it's really uh, helpful to, uh, to uh, instructive to, mm -hmm. to have that differential. Cool. Okay, thank you, everybody. It's been great. Love you thank all. You. Thank you, Maria. Thank, thank you, Maria. Maria.